Lisa from Novel Tech Review and today we're going to look at the Kindle Paperwhite. This is Amazon's latest e-ink reader and it features a side light, not really a backlight though. These lights come from the bottom here, just a little bit, does a lot though, and it's really, well, pretty close to Paperwhite as e-ink readers go. We're going to look at it now. The Kindle Paperwhite is Amazon's latest e-ink reader and this is the first one to feature a side light from Amazon. Now, Barnes & Noble did it first with their Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light, and Amazon uses a slightly different technology, but they do have some similarities. In this case, the side lights come from the bottom versus the top on the Nook Touch, and there's some differences in technology. Amazon has a nice little explanation on their website if you're dying to see how it all works underneath the screen, so to speak. The side lighting actually is turned on right now. You'd be hard-pressed to tell that that's because in a room with reasonably good ambient light like this, it just combines with the reflected light, that is the light that's coming in from the window here to light up the display and make it that much more bright. So you know how e-ink readers are, if you've used one before, they tend to be gray backgrounds with black text and this comes closer to being white. It still is not white, but it is the closest to white that I've seen yet. Now the backlighting is not maxed all the way. If you want to do that, you can tap up here on the little light bulb symbol and you can see where we are right now. We're about three quarters of the way up. We can go all the way to maximum and it gets even a bit whiter looks really good. I've been using e-ink readers, gosh, since they first came out, since Sony's original e-reader came out, and I have to say this is definitely the best screen yet. Uh, it, it isn't just the side lighting that does it that makes it look fairly white, so you finally got a lot more contrast going on, but also it's a higher resolution display. It's still six inches, but we've gone up to 1024 by 768 resolution instead of 800 by 600, so that allows for sharper fonts, sharper images, book covers, and comics as well. Is the side lighting perfect? No. Again, in a room where you know it's just not quite bright enough to be ideal to read and you turn on the side lighting, you'll never see the, the LEDs kind of doing a little bit of a shadowing effect here because you'll actually see individual LED lights if you're in a very dark room. Say you're reading in bed in the dark. We're talking pretty dark room here. becomes noticeable. In a moderate lit room, you won't see it. If it's fairly dark, not pitch black, you probably still will see it. I find it a lot less distracting than the Nook with glow light, and we'll show you a comparison in the dark so you can see what those are like. For those of you who used a Kindle before, you're probably noticing how different this user interface is right here. Finally, we get book covers, just like you get on the Nook Touch and on the Kobo Touch, it's more modern. If you like that list view, it's as simple as tapping here and switching over to, well, list view right there. So for those of you who actually prefer this, you can still have it, but I think a lot of people do like those book cover views instead and now we've finally got it and the UIs are marching somewhat towards the Kindle Fire. Obviously we don't have the carousel because this thing doesn't do nearly as much as the Kindle Fire does. Which gets to another point about this. This is a single purpose e-reader. For a while we saw e-readers getting music players, audible book playback, I, pretty much every feature you could think of throwing in there seemed like they were going to get them. And now instead the, the goal is to make them as inexpensive as possible, give you as good a display as possible, and make them just for dedicated reading. If you want a multi-purpose product, then the manufacturers want you to go to a tablet instead. So there are no speakers here. Okay, you can see we have our micro USB port right here. This comes with a micro USB cable so you can transfer and side load books onto the device if you want else so you can charge it over USB. The charger is not in the box. That's how they make these things so inexpensive to buy. They don't throw in things like the charger. So you're going to charge this either using your smartphone's USB charger or your computer. And here we have the power button. This is the only button on the product. There are no hardware page turn buttons. So for those of you who like hardware page turn buttons, you're just not going to get them here. Absolutely nothing going on on the sides. Soft touch, black finish, very thin, very light, 7.5 ounces for the Wi-Fi only version. The Wi-Fi plus 3G version weighs 7.8 ounces. Inconsequentially thin really nice. Uh, not much of a, a rise to the bezel. Gone is that big giant humpy thing that we see on some e-readers. And the display itself has a little bit of a texture to it. You can almost hear a little bit of a rasping of your finger on it. And I like it because it feels more like paper. It's not just like a slick thing that you're grabbing on. The Kindle Paperwhite sells for $119. That's for the Wi-Fi only version and that has advertisements. That means when, you, when the device goes to sleep or you turn it off, you'll see a screensaver with an Amazon ad or offer on it instead of like a dead author screensaver. If you pay $20 more, you can get rid of the ads. By the way, there's always an ad strip here where they're pushing something on you as well. And Barnes & Noble does the same thing. They, of course, try to suggest related things you might be interested in there. 
If you want the 3G version, which also has Wi-Fi, then that is $179. Use special offers in case you actually like those ads, and sometimes they do do nice things, I think. I just got a coupon for $5 worth of free music on the Amazon MP3 store. Anyway, if you miss one of those, you can just tap there and see what offers are active and go with one if you would like to. You can create collections on device. Woohoo! Finally, nice that Amazon has added that feature. Again, you saw list view. You can sync and check for new items if you purchase something uh, using your computer and it hasn't auto-delivered to the device, so it usually does auto-deliver pretty reliably. We have the famous experimental web browser, which is a WebKit web browser. It's fairly capable, but the thing is e-ink refresh is pretty slow, so scrolling around in e-ink devices is not so well, compelling. It's better than nothing, though. And we have settings. And here you can see we have airplane mode, which turns off your wireless radio or radios. Wi-Fi, this has single band, 802.11bgn, 2.4 gigahertz. Mm, okay reception, not super duper, but you know, it gets the job done. You can change your registration and information, and you can change passcode. Notice we have parental controls here, so now you can actually block things like access to the web browser and to the store. So that means you can give it to your kid, and your kid is not going to go ahead and spend $100 on the store. You can choose your languages and dictionaries. As usual, we get the Oxford English and Oxford American dictionaries for those of us who are in the United States. And for reading options here, you can have your annotations backed up to the cloud, your popular highlights, public notes, page refresh. It's going to refresh every six page turns. That's what e-ink readers have been doing for the last generation or so with those pearl e-ink displays. So you don't see that flash to black every page. You get it every six page. However, sometimes you'll see fonts are not perfectly drawn or you'll see some ghosting. And if you don't like that, well, you can turn this option on in every single page. You'll see the flash to back black, but you will get the page refresh. And then we have our social networking for those of you who like to share on Twitter and Facebook what you're reading. Now, if we're in a book, that's what it looks like. Nice, sharp, clear text. I can see the difference. This is Amazon's default font that they've been using forever. Right here, Cecilia. And now there's Cecilia Condense also. And they've added a couple more fonts. Since the, the display has higher PPI, they can support fonts with uh, s fancier serifs on the serifs, or the little curly cues and things that stick out from the edges of the letter, like the little crossbars on the bottom of an A. And so they can be nice and sharp. Now we've got Baskerville here, and we've got Palatino, and for those of you who are into sans serif fonts without any squigglies, we have Futura and Helvetica. You can see you've got your line spacing controls, your margin controls, and quite a few text sizes to choose from. So I'm going to switch over to Baskerville and see how that looks. Now that didn't do a full page refresh, so I will force it to do it. One, two, three, four, five. Six and there, see that flash to black on the six page turn. So now we've got as perfect as the text is ever going to look on this, and it looks darn sharp. And the page, as I said, is very light gray, so really so far the most like reading on a book. Nice to access our menu right here. Again, you can do the usual navigation to store, home, go to is also here. Share x ray is supported. This is a side loaded book, so we don't get any x ray options. And you have more options here for things like landscape mode, yay, book description. Sync to furthest red page in case it doesn't do that automatically. Add a bookmark, which is also as simple as just tapping in that right-hand corner up there. You can view all your notes and your reading progress. And speaking of reading progress, if we take a look down here, we now see how many minutes it thinks I'm into the chapter and how much farther I've got to go. And we've got it has a percentage right here and how many hours and minutes for the total it thinks it's going to take me to finish this book. Interesting that they add these kind of statistics. Still regular page numbers. Uh, we're going with locations instead here. Typical of Amazon. As ever, words are easy to look up on the Kindle. You just tap and hold on a word that you want to look up. And we automatically get the definition. We can show the full definition. We can highlight it. And then if we choose more, you can share, add a note, dictionary, Wikipedia, translation via Bing, or report a content error. And so we want to add a note. Here's our on-screen keyboard. Here's where our note shows up. And it's pretty easy to type on here. And I'm just typing random words, but you get the idea. Screen refreshes, since it does that partial refresh pretty quickly, so it's actually not too bad to type on that. 
Now, how about PDFs? In general, 6-inch e-ink readers are not my first choice for reading PDFs. Really, a bigger screen, number one, is pretty important. And in general, e-ink, because of its refresh rate, if you're going to have to pan around the screen on a smaller size, is, is just not super ideal, but we can do it. And right here, we have a manual for an HP computer. And though it's really tiny, it is readable. You can switch to landscape mode. Gets you a better view of things. And then tapping up here, it actually does switch the orientation for the navigation, will get you to all your navigation controls. So nice, sharp, clear illustrations, good looking, reasonably good scrolling speeds, and you can do pinch zooming here. Now, granted, once you do that, you see you know, the whole scrolling around business, is, it gets a little old a little quickly, but it's better than nothing, and given how sharp the display is, a, a PDF that was meant for really a larger screen size is still readable. So there's that. And also, while we're looking at this PDF, you can see there's a contrast option here. So you can actually adjust the contrast. So I find that the middle setting is generally the best, but that can be handy if you're looking at a PDF that has a lot of grayish kind of fonts on it. We'll check that out now. So we're going to look at a rebate form, which has, well, a lot of gray on it rather than black. So you can see where maybe upping the contrast here would certainly help you. And suddenly it becomes very dark and very readable back there. The shopping interface hasn't changed too much from previous Kindles. You can see you can browse by these categories right here. They've got Kindle Selects that they're featuring, a couple of things to try, including some applications and some free stuff. So let's say we want a free game for the Kindle. And that is free, so we'll just go ahead and buy that. And now here it is, showing up along with our books. So we'll shoot for our word. So there you go. A game. And now we have it next to the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. And that's Barnes & Noble's side lit offering. And you can see what they look like. Right away, I think the difference in contrast jumps out of you. you. You lose a little bit of contrast when you go with the glow light version of the Nook, but it was worth it to me, certainly, because, hey, I could finally like read in low light conditions thanks to that side lighting. You can see how much darker this is. Now, the backlight is on on both of these guys, and it's about the same level, so it shows you the difference. And the Kindle is looking a little bit whiter on the background as well. The, the light is pretty neutral on our Kindle, whereas it's a little bit bluey fluorescent-y on the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. In terms of design, what do you get with the Nook? You get an actual home button right there. Wow. And then there's a power button on the back side. And you have page turn buttons on each side. So for those of you who like that and who also prefer a bigger bezel, something to hold on to, you have bigger hands maybe, you may like that better. They weigh about the same, though the Kindle looks a little bit more svelte. It, they're about the same weight. And from the side view, you can see the Kindle is, well, a lot skinnier. Not quite as wide. And the, the Nook has a much thicker bezel that sticks up above the display more. So it really, it's a matter of personal preference. Certainly the Kindle looks a little bit more modern, uh, flush and slim and all that kind of thing. And most people don't like chunky looking bezels. But again, it's really, it's an ergonomic issue just as much. So you might prefer this one. And if we take a look at the back view, Kindle, pretty much your basic simple slab. And the Nook has this kind of sculpted back. Both have a soft touch finish. Both feel pretty nice to me. One other thing the Nook adds is this expandable storage slot. Always nice to have. So you can fit even more books on. By the way, the new Kindle Paperwhite, this has 2 gigs of internal storage. So it's down from 4 gigs on the... Kindle Touch, and there is no expansion slot. Now, Amazon figures you're going to use their cloud services a lot and download stuff as you need from them, then remove from your device. You can always download it again. And 2 gigs will hold a lot of books. It's really 1.25 gigs that's available for your use. So your average book, say, is 200 to 500K. That's a whole lot of books. Now, granted, comics, and if you're going to sideload PDFs, 
those are going to take up more space. But for either of those, honestly, I would start to look at a tablet more so for a more pleasant viewing experience versus e-ink. And now we're in an almost completely dark room. This is a room with no windows, no lights turned on. There is some light coming through a doorway so we don't trip and fall over ourselves. Just the kind of really dark reading environment you might have in your living room and say somebody else is watching TV and you want to read a book and the lights are not on in the room. And on the left we have the Nook Simple Touch with Low Light and on the right here we have the Amazon Kindle Paperwhite. So you can see what both screens look like. I would say that the Kindle Paperwhite is looking whiter. You can see the kind of bluish cast that's noticeable on the Nook simple touch with glow light and also you can see that both of these if if it is a dark room you're gonna see some staircasing some of that shadowing coming from the lights now on the nook simple touch it's up top here see how it's lighter at the top pretty noticeable and despite what Jeff Bezos said the Kindle Paperwhite is not perfectly white if you're in a dark room that is or not perfectly even lit you can see some staircasing down at the bottom but it's actually less than it is on the nook so for those of you who can stand any kind of shadowing whatsoever there is going to be a little bit at the bottom of the Kindle Paperwhite if you're in a dark room. If you're in a medium room, a kind of just dim room but not a really really black room you won't be able to see it so much but in a, in a quite dark room like this you can see a little bit. Does it bother me? No not so much. It's actually a lot less distracting than it is on my Nook Simple Touch. And so you can see where the light comes from. We're holding this obviously at an extreme angle right now so you can see the actual LEDs whose light gets diffused across the display and this is on the Kindle Paperwhite. And here you can see the lights on the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light, which actually doesn't come through as well on the camera, but they, these actually have a blue white cast on them. A little bit more noticeable. And now we have the Kindle Paperwhite next to the Kindle Fire HD. This is Amazon's new 7 inch tablet. So you can see obvious difference in size here. The tablet is going to be a lot bigger. Also, not quite as bright in a bright room. That, that's where LCDs tend to fade out a little bit, and e ink looks its best. And you're going to have glare here. This is a glossy display. In terms of thickness and styling, well, they both have that kind of minimalist black looking thing going on here, so they go well together, shall we say. Both quite thin. Paper white's going to be thinner. Smaller footprint overall. And here's the two home screen views that you get in the two products, and you can see, well, obviously there's a lot more going on here. We have actual Android running on the background, so you can get some high-quality games here. We have music, we have videos, we have newsstand that has very graphical layout for magazines. We've got a web browser, that's really your full Android Chrome-based web browser, documents, and so on. So if you're looking for something that's more general purpose, it's going to do all those things. It's going to be your music player, your video player, all that kind of thing. Obviously the, the Kindle Fire HD would be more of your choice than something like the Paperwhite, but I think most of you know that already. If you're just looking for something that's awesome for reading books and has insanely long battery life, that's going to be the Paperwhite. And now we've got the experimental web browser up. This is our website, mobiletechreview.com. You can see it actually does a very good job of rendering the desktop site. And you can scroll around the page and there's that little e-ink refresh and you can Zoom in, zoom back out, and we have article mode over here, which is an interesting option. You can bookmark the page, look at your history, browser settings, just control your cache and JavaScript, that kind of thing. So if you choose article mode, that'll be a little challenging because this is a front page, so there really is not so much of an article there, but it's sort of like the Safari reading list kind of attempt. You can go back to web mode. So it's certainly handy for accessing the Wikipedia or something like that. I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time browsing on this, though. So that's the Kindle Paperwhite. It's available now, starting at 119 for the Wi-Fi only version. All of them have two gigs of storage. There is a 179 Wi-Fi plus 3G model available. Uh, the only challenge right now is uh, Amazon's website says there's a four to six week back order period. Now I guess this has been quite popular for them so you may have to wait a while to get one. However, there are probably some in various bricks and mortar stores you might be able to check out like Best Buy as well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the Kindle Paperwhite and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.